Everybody's interest in Scrimshaw, it seems like that a lot of you are very interested in that art form and thought it might be time to do a, a little bit on ivory identification so you know what you're looking at. A lot of people don't know the difference between the different type of ivories. There's quite a few different types, three major types are of course elephant ivory which is pretty much off the market now people aren't terribly interested in it and with good reason trying to deter the poaching that's been going on in africa for so long but there's also walrus ivory and there's whale's tooth or marine ivory those are like the major ones and you got hippopotamus ivory and you've got warthog tusks they've got ivory one i don't have an example of which wish i did was is a narwhal or maybe someday i'll see a piece of that <laughs> never know we've got an example of elephant ivory this little wafer it's very thin we held it up against a light and showed the schrager lines this is an identifying feature of elephant ivory and in the close-up you'll see it has a kind of a cross hatchy kind of a pattern to it i think it's kind of like three circles that are intersecting, you know, circles of rings that intersect and make up this checkerboardy pattern on the end grain of the tusk. So this is a piece of tusk that was cut right off, you know, like uh, like this being a chunk of the tusk. And so we took, somebody took a wafer off of a smaller one, shows the checkerboardy cross hatching on the end. Now on the side, you know, if this was cut open, you would see grain running up the length of it like you would a piece of wood. This is a, a very small piece of, you know, this is a full tusk of a very small elephant, but I have it to show you that the elephant tusks are hollow in the root end, and that hollow goes way up in on this particular piece. It ends about here on a bigger tusk, of course, it'd be bigger. That is different from walrus tusks. Those are the two major tusks that you'd be seeing. Walrus tusk is hollow just for a little ways and then it turns into this weird core that I will show you in a minute. So anyway, this is uh, the basic shape. I mean, even a, a bigger elephant tusk would look very similar in shape to this, but of course, much larger. This is a piece of fossilized walrus tusk, hundreds of years old. Ivory seems to last for a long time in the weather. This has been laying in minerals for years and years and years, and over the time, you know, it's developed some cracks and things like that, but it's also picked up minerals, stained the, the ivory. Of course, seldom gets colored. Once in a while, you'll find one that's colored right through, but it's really pretty stuff. But this is a great example of walrus ivory, even though it's fossilized, because it shows you the core, the marrow, of it they call it mutton fat and I think that's a really cool name if you took a piece of that and laid it down next to lamb fat it looks very much the same <laughs> this is a walrus tusk this one would probably be this has been kind of sanded down so it might be the left hand side Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a single tusk now. Where you cut that, you'd have the same sort of a, an affair going on with that. And then the third major ivory that most scrim shanders work with or want to work with, I'm lucky enough to have some whale's teeth, also known as marine ivory, but it's a whale's tooth, sperm whale, 60 foot long whale, and they get longer, but that's a nice size tooth right there. So it's got a tag in it. Whale's teeth are hollow to a point. Some of them more, some of them less, but they generally go up to a nice clean point up in here, the hollow does, similar to the elephant tusk. These don't have Schrager lines like elephant does. Walrus does not have Schrager lines either. They're slightly different composition, but, but they do vary in hollowness and it's just the nicest stuff to work with if you're carving or scratching, you know, a scrimshaw. Now, because people are very interested in learning the, the art form and, and there really aren't a lot of whale's teeth available to like everybody, you can't just go down and buy one at the hardware store, they make plastic ones, polymore uh, resin cast teeth. And a lot of them are cast off of original teeth, even to the point of the scrimshaw. Oh. And yeah. this one may be an example, or this may have been a bare, plain model of a tooth that somebody had after the fact scratch but i have seen castings of original scrimshaw work and even the little lines come up 
and they, people get confused when they find these things in shops, thinking they're buying a real tooth, they're not. You can see on the end here, I haven't seen one of these yet that didn't look like this. It's cut off, the cavity ends abruptly, not tapered down into a point like a real tooth would be. The other thing is they're much lighter and they warm to your hand very quickly because it's plastic. This was actually bought by a friend of mine hoping it was a real one. <laughs> it was like wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so it's always a sad thing when people post these on, you know, look what I found, what's the value? And it's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> $4.99. Mm, that's plastic. But for a, a beginner scrim shander, you know, it's a great thing to, to practice on. I mean, people will practice on the back of a plastic spoon. So this is a lot better than that. You can see the color difference. These are generally quite white. And also on the end of the real tooth, there are different layers to a whale's tooth. And you'll see that there's an outer layer of relatively white ivory, and then you get into a creamy or center. You can see that on the end of the real tooth coming out. Uh, you won't see that on these. So a lot of people still say, oh, if you want to tell if it's plastic or not, you heat up a needle and stick it in the end and it melts, it's plastic. People don't appreciate you doing that, just saying. <laughs> don't bring a pin into a shop and start melting holes. And anyway, this is one of the smallest sperm whale teeth that I've got. Probably tells a sad tale. Hmm. Not sure if the little bugger washed up on beach or in some other foul end. But. So those are the three major ivories that you most typically would work with. Then there, there is hippopotamus ivory. It doesn't seem to be a huge market for it and they don't seem to be affected. I haven't heard of a lot of poaching going on for hippos because no hippos bite back. <laughs> and I used to think, you know, you see the cartoons of a hippopotamus and they got like two teeth on top, two teeth on the bottom and that, well, they got actually a mouthful of teeth and they all are a little bit different shaped. This is another type of hippo tooth and these a lot of times are called pegs. They're from different regions of the mouth, different parts of the mouth. There's warthog tusks. These are really lovely material to work with. The carves really nice, scrimshaw's really nice. It's a really good ivory, big enough to make net ski out of for other little small carvings or cane handles, knife handles, things like that. And the interesting thing too is that the hippopotamus, the warthog, both have Schrager lines like the elephant. The other one that has Schrager lines is actually another type of elephant. It's the woolly mammoth. This mammoth ivory has been kicking around for at least, you know, 20 to 40,000 years. I'm not sure exactly when they started showing up, but. Wow, so that cross hatching, I would almost think those were like saw marks. Yeah, no, that's the Schrager lines. Wow. The problem with mammoth ivory is you can see the cracks at the section of tusk. They're kind of unstable. Occasionally they'll find them that have been extremely well preserved. And I've seen one carved, the whole thing was carved in China. I think it had a stampede of horses running across it, which, uh, and I was impressed how stable that particular one was. But most times you'll find them doing what's known as delaminating and coming apart in layers. You get a lot of pieces of tusk like this, and if it's solid enough, you can use them for small projects and jewelry pieces and, and scrimshaw and so forth. It's tough to find mammoth, at least around here. I haven't found in any shops or anything that uh, were solid enough to carve, but I'm sure there's some out there somewhere. It's a piece of fossilized walrus ivory. It was laying in the minerals for hundreds of years to turn it this dark, very cool stuff. Find them in all sizes. This here is considered a big tooth, but they get a bit bigger. I've seen four pounders, never handled one, <laughs> but two pounders are still showing up on occasion. To identify different ivories, one you'd look for Schrager lines, and that would start off telling you whether it was an African type of ivory, like uh, elephant or hippopotamus. Hippopotamus Schrager lines are, and warthog Schrager lines are very much 
finer, it's much smaller than the elephant. So then if it doesn't have the Schrager lines, then you start thinking marine ivory, which would incorporate the, the walrus and the whale. And with the, to identify the walrus, you're looking for that marrow, that tapioca kind of looking core. When you're working with this stuff, the outer half inch of the walrus tusk is, it's the best stuff to carve, it's the best stuff to scrimshaw. Good, 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 and strong. The core, not so much. It's strong-ish, but it doesn't have any grain, you know, running grain that gives it strength that's, it could snap. It's hard to put detail in. Oh, and walrus not only have ivory tusks, but they have ivory teeth. This is one of them. This is a good example of one. These actually are my favorite little things to carve because they're just pure, lovely ivory all the way through. There's no real core like the tusk, so it's just clean carving all the way through. They're pretty sweet. Is it elk? Elk have a, I guess back, who knows how far back, but they must have had little tusks coming out at one point and they've just kind of lost the need for them, but they still have little tiny ivory teeth and I have one or two, but do you think I could put my fingers on them? Um, do you think? Uh, yes. <laughs> I can. These are elk's teeth. I think they only have two. I've seen pictures of Native American dresses that were just rows and rows of these. They drill a little hole through the skinny end there and sew them onto their dresses. You think about how many elks it takes to fill a dress up with these things. And these guys are like, you know, they're hardcore hunters <laughs> feeding their families, but still must have taken years to accumulate all of those. Oh, there is another thing to mention, because a lot of, there've been a lot of things made out of ivory, but there has also been a lot of things made out of bone. And so to tell the difference between bone and ivory, we actually did a video on scrimshawing a knife that had bone scales. And those are kind of common, more so than, than ivory handled pocket knives these days. Works very well, but you, you gotta realize that bone generally has little tiny pores in it that were nerve vessels or whatever. Those little pores pick up ink and so forth. Thinking if I had a piece of whale bone that, uh, well, I'd do right over your head, there's a cane. <laughs> Thanks. This is a walking stick made from a jawbone of a sperm whale. You can see the little dark pores in that. It, to me, this is still just as precious as any of it, but that's how you tell that this wasn't a piece of elephant ivory or something like that. The darkness is handling it for years. You also see that it's, they just about always have a hook to them. Yeah. This is a relatively plain one. It's got an octagon top and then it tapers down into a round. Some of them are pretty elaborately carved. Gorgeous. <laughs> stick? I like sticks. Look at go. Yeah. Give me a stick. <laughs> this is an art form that goes back with humanity to the days when we first probably tipped over a mammoth, you know? Mm -hmm. So they recognized it as a very special material. They would carve spiritual images out of it and things. And even there is something spiritual about ivory. We've always known it all our existence. And if you've got a question, please let me know about it.